I say in a so so so. It's not so so so. I will break it down for you in proper English for my international audience when the time is right. Bow your heads with me once again, everlasting Father and our God. As I open up your words tonight, open up my thoughts and inspire me, my mouth, and speak through me, our hearts to receive them and our lives to live them. Oh God, I pray that you may empower me with the Holy Spirit, that your words may go forth with clarity, that somebody watching tonight, listening tonight, may be transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our key text, Luke eleven twenty eight. 28, let's say together, Blessed are they who hear the word of God and obey it. It no so, so, so. Jamaicans know that popular term, sister Iris. What it is simply saying in plain English, there's more to the story, Pastor Archer. But oftentimes when we hear Jamaicans refer to this term, it's when they are thinking supernaturally. Sometimes there's a sickness. Doctors are unable to identify the problem. They do scans after scans, yet they are unable to come up with a diagnosis. And there are some neighbors, family members, sometimes even church members, who will show up and say, it no so so so. Once again, they are saying there's more to the story or more than that which meets the eyes. Sometimes when people die, whereas on the pink slip, the cause of death is indicated, yet people would walk around and say, it no so so so. And that to them means that some sort of science, not integrated science, took place, obia, witchcraft, or something of the sort. Indeed, when people say that it no so so so, they are partially right, excepting that they mix up where the no so 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 comes from. You see, the crooks or the cause of all human problems is not physical, but spiritual. And in the upcoming series on NJC Church Online, you'll hear more about it coming up August 8th. We are going to be focusing on this battle, this warfare in details with Pastor Bowers. And what we need to understand is that fighting against the spiritual with the carnal, which is the flesh or physical, is a recipe for failure. Galatians 5, 17 and 18 tells us, For the flesh lusts or desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, Elder Hewitt. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things you wish. So that you do not what? Do the things you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. In other words, we are living in a spiritual warfare. And the spirits we are fighting with are not the spirits that people claim to be involved when them say it no so so so. It's not no dopey anybody set on you. It's not grandmother came back from your enemy or some uncle or sister to haunt you. But it is the devil. That's why 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 instructs us. You see, when we understand before I get to the text, the gravity and the seriousness this, of the spiritual battle, then many people will not take their Christian lifestyle for granted. And those who believe that they have all the time into the world to come to the Lord would recognize that they would be better being in the Lord already. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or to somebody to consume. No, Elder Young, the Bible is not saying that Satan is looking for somebody to eat. He's looking for somebody to take over so that he can use you for his glory and wreck your story. And I will tell you more about that and prove it from the scriptures. So the Bible instructs us, verse 9 of 1 Peter 5, resist him. Steadfast where? In the faith. Without the faith, you can't resist him. 
knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Now Luke chapter 11 and verse 14 going on tells us a very interesting story about it. So there's more to the story. And he, Jesus, was casting out a what? A demon. And it was what? Mute. So the demons had various characteristics. And Luke was specific in saying that this particular demon was mute. At the face of it, Pastor Archer, one would believe that demon is demon. But we will see tonight that the Bible gave different descriptions to demons. So it was that when the demon had gone out of the one that Jesus cast him from, that the mute did what church? Spoke. So the idea here is that the dumb man was dumb because of a devil. And the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Others testing him said, show us a sign from heaven. I don't understand people who are in unbelief. You just saw something you've never seen before. A man who was not able to speak was transformed by the word of Christ. And you still look for sign. But he, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to what? Desolation and a house divided against itself shall what? Fall. So if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say I cast out demons by Beelzebub. In other words, if Satan is helping to tear down his own, his own mercenaries or his own soldiers, then who is going to fight for him? Am I talking to somebody? You need to understand that the devils may not have the capacity to love one another, but they get along well when it is time to bring you a living hell. And so you need to learn from this lesson that if you want to stand, you must learn the power of unity. Notice it says, a house that are divided against itself cannot stand. It was talking about the concrete and the steel and the cement. If your family is going to survive the roaring lion, you've got to be a unit. Hello, somebody. If you are going to make it as a home, you've got to keep Christ at the center to be the gum and the glue between husband and wife and children. Hello, am I talking to somebody? So as Jesus continued to refute them, he said to them, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judge. But if I cast out demons with the what? The finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. And anything that God does with his finger is a powerful matter. When he wrote his law, he wrote it with his what? Finger. And so now he continued, when a strong man fully armed guards his own place, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Now listen to the last part of the text. Verse 24 through 26. When an unclean spirit, there goes another description of demons. So he cast out a dumb demon, a mute demon, and the young man, Pastor Shakes, was able to speak. And then Jesus taught them that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, notice that's how Satan consumes somebody. He comes and lives in you if you give him the opportunity. He goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. What an audacity. Sometimes Satan has gotten so comfortable in some of our lives that he believes that it is now his house. And therefore, you need to understand that he says, I will go back to my house from which I came. Sometimes Satan has set in your life, flat screen TV in your life. I cause pure heartache and strife Cut between like knife Between husband and wife You need to be wrapped up And tied up in Jesus 
and when he comes past the archer and he finds it swept and put in order and I soon get back to what that swept and put in order means I'll come back to it later but listen to this important point verse 26 then he goes and takes with him what seven other spirits more what wicked than himself and they enter and do what dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first let that sink in. I don't think some people got it. I'll explain the swept and clean and put in order earlier on. But what I want to bring out here is that there are demons more than demons. Because it seems like Mary Magdalene, Jesus cast how many devils out of her? Seven. And so it seems to be the popular opinion then that people who knew the truth and went against the truth, backsliders, the devil holds them stronger. In other words, when the one demon was in the man, and because the man saw Jesus, and Jesus kicked him out, when he came back and found no Jesus, empty and swept and clean, no spirit of God within his life, he said, if he kicked me out before, he can't kick me out again, so I go for my friend then. Hello, somebody? Have you ever even wondered why some backsliders are so hard to talk to? Because when the devil loses you one time and he get back a grip on you, he's coming stronger. Stay in Jesus. So the Bible says what? Seven other spirits more what? Wicked than himself. What does this tell us? There are levels of devils. Hello? I tell you something, so, so, so. There are what? Levels of devils. That is why Paul in Ephesians 6 10 instructs us. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the what? In the Lord and in the power of his might. How must I, Brother Harris, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? He says, I must put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. You see, when you have a problem with your children, it not so, so, so. When your happy life with a happy wife all of a sudden ends up in an unhappy strife, it no so 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 pastor archer. And when you find brothers and sisters in the church fighting against each other, tearing down one another, it no so so so. And when you are trying to get along with that neighbor, that family member, you are doing well by them, but they are just fighting, fighting, fighting. The Bible says, uh, don't take up the war with them. It's bigger than them because the battle is not against flesh and blood. So who are we fighting against then? It says, but against what? Principalities. Against what? powers against what the rulers of the darkness of this age against what spiritual hosts of wickedness in high or heavenly places stick up in now these terms are used in general to talk about the different levels of earthly leadership but by virtue of the context here in ephesians 6 paul demonstrates to us that he's not referring to roman power He's not referring to the past Babylonian power, nor the Hellenistic Greek power. Because he had already established that we are not fighting against what? Flesh and blood. So what comes next has nothing to do with mortals. It is bigger than that. It not so, so, so. We fight against principalities, Pastor Nevins. Powers. Rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, principles are known to be what? The leaders of an organization. And therefore, principalities are used to describe the high-ranking demons of Satan. Because Satan coming out of heaven mimics God's government. And therefore, just as how you had what? Archangels and cherubims and seraphims. Satan has structured his demons to fight against the people of God. So whereas you have some little local demons, he has some leaders, some commanders, some generous pastor archers. The principalities, them have them battalion. And I soon come back to that. And the powers, they are top ranking. 
They are the rulers of the what? The darkness. So Satan, as the Bible shows us, is the prince of this world. One, a princeship that he has taken upon himself because he not own it. But as Jesus said when he came, recognizing that when the true world boss showed up, Satan was going to go down. He says, I beheld Satan like lightning fell from heaven against spiritual what? Host of wickedness in high places. If our eyes could only open and we could behold the struggle that's going on around us every day, we would drop dead. So God best prepares us I mean, protects us from it by not allowing us to see the fight that is going on over our souls. If you see what's happening when you go to bed at night, how Satan fight to keep you dead in your sleep. But Jesus say, arise, Jervy Johnson. You are not done yet. Hello, somebody. I thank God for the covering. That is why the Bible gives us the assurance that the angel of the Lord, what, encamps round about them who does what? Who love him, who fear him, and delivers him. So Paul says, take up the whole armor of God. Paul, what is the armor? You're just telling me about the armor. Where do I find it? Is it Lord and Lady? Where do I find it? Is it house of style? No. He says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your what? Your waist girded with truth. If you want to overcome the nasuasas of them, hello somebody. If you want to overcome the legions of devils who are out there trying to tear down your life and to mash up your life like Nico, you need to take the truth. Having put on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. When you walk in righteousness, the righteousness can come into your life. Don't use it on the SS sisters, Orion. Righteousness and truth are weapons against the enemy. Not only that, he says that I, you must have your feet shod, not with longboat boot. Longboat mount boot look nice and cute, but with the preparation of the what? The gospel of peace. So you must walk and preach the word of God. And he says, above all, taking on the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench what? All the fiery darts of the enemy. Then here, the critical one. Some people will get shot in at their breasts and get wet. Some people will get gunshot wounds in at their feet and get wet. Some get shot by hand and get wet. But seldom people get shot in at their head, pastor, and get wet. So Paul says, and take. What's the verb, everybody? take shout it those in studio for the people online take if you are hearing me facebook and youtube type it in the chats take the helmet of salvation if you are going to overcome the principalities overcome the powers you need to have salvation on your head that's why we brought to the hope experience we are not coming after you because we are looking money in the church so we want some more people no we are not coming after you because we are the ones who stand to benefit. We are coming after you because we want you to escape the damnation for those who walk with the devil. Because let me tell you, the story is told of a man who bought his daughter a parrot. Let's call the parrot, parrot Polly. Every parrot named Polly. And every day Polly would look through the window at the crows enjoying themselves seemingly. And Polly, though it lacked nothing past the Nevins, felt as if its life was just miserable. It was just locked away in the house, and it wanted its freedom. But what the bird Polly never knew is that the parrots, I mean the, 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 the crows, were bad. Because the father of the child also had a cornfield. And oftentimes, the crows would go down and destroy the crop. So the man bought a shotgun so that he could scare them off from time to time. And the day brother came out that the father decided to go and try the shotgun was the same day Polly said, enough is enough. I want my freedom and escaped from the house. Because Polly wanted popularity, it went and joined the crows. And anywhere they went, Polly went along with them. And ultimately when it was lunchtime, they went into the man's cornfield. And where did Polly go? Into the man's cornfield. And when the father saw the birds, bam! 
he fired a shot and something fell and the rest scattered. When he went to investigate Pastor Archer, it was Polly, D-E-A-D, -E dead. When he took home the dead bird and gave to his daughter, she cried and said, Daddy, Daddy, who killed Polly? The father said, sweetheart, it's not who killed Polly, it's what killed Polly. Bad company, sweetheart. Polly died because of bad company. You need to understand that birds of a feather do not only flock together. Sometimes they get shot together, literally and, uh, uh, and spiritually. Am I talking to somebody? That, that is why Jesus said to the Pharisees uh, that they are going to be told to go to hell that was prepared for what? The devil and his angels. Uh, if you mingle with Satan, you will catch him flee. So the Bible says, take the helmet of salvation. Because as long as you are in sin, as long as you are living in your backsliding, you are living in the devil's camp. You can't have it both ways. It's either you're in or you're out. It's not on the river, on the bank. Hello, somebody. It's not on the river, on the bank. It's either you're in or you're out. Hello? in or you're out and as long as you have not yet received jesus as your savior you have not yet gotten the hope experience you have not yet gotten the vaccination of salvation you have not yet gone to the waters and water baptized and filled with the holy spirit you are living for the devil hello but some people are going to say pastor i know that i'm not yet a christian but me and i'm not a devil I am not living for the devil. I am a child of Christ. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hello, somebody. When Jesus was contending with the Jews one day, not fussing with them, they were fussing with him rather. He said to them that you are of your father. And they said to him in John 8, our father is Abraham. We have one father, which is Abraham. Jesus said, no. Because Abraham was a good man, a righteous man. And if you were Abraham's children, you would not be trying to kill me. Because Abraham was a what? A man who obeyed the commands of God. But you are of your father. So they got offended and they said, we have one father and it is God. And Jesus said, no, if God were your father, you would love me. Because I proceed from God, but you are of your father. So they said to Jesus, go away from here. You were born in fornication and you're instructing us. Think we don't know about Joseph and Mary and the jacket situation. For they never bought the story of the Holy Spirit impregnating Mary. And so when they were there pressing him, Jesus kept on saying, what? You are of your father. And they asked, who is our father? Jesus said that you are of your father, the devil. And his works do you do? So listen, as long as you are living in sin, you cannot say God is your father. If you claim that God is your father and you are not yet baptized, if you claim that God is your father and you are still a backslider, your jacket, uh, some people don't know the jacket. Well, Jamaicans say that you are jacket. It means that you are trying to give the man the wrong pitney. A child that doesn't belong to him. Jesus said his mother and his father and his brethren are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the what? Spirit. This is now the Holy Spirit. Because listen, it's either you have an unclean spirit or you have the Holy Spirit. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the what? The word of God. Praying always with our prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for our sins. Listen now. Human beings are not the ones initiating the battle. They are just pawns being used by one spiritual force or the other. So the big question is, which spirit owns you? Is it an unclean spirit from the devil? Or is it the Holy Spirit? Because Romans 8 verse 5 going down says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on what? The things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, set their minds on the what? The things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, Roman Red Bull over Jesus. Carnally minded, shocked up in sin more than Jesus. 
Carnally minded. Guns are smoking over Jesus. Carnally minded. I can't wait for the party them start back more than Jesus. Is enmity with God. To be carnally minded, the Bible says, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You wonder why sometimes your life is so miserable? It not so 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 at the wrong spirit you have. Because the carnal mind is what? Enmity against God, the enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be because they are fighting against each other, the spirit and the flesh. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Sinner man, you can't please God. Sinner woman, you can't please God. If you are still living in a relationship that is not a marriage, choosing a man or a woman over Jesus, you can't please God. If you are saying that you are too young to come to church and you have to enjoy your life a little bit first, you can't please God. But then Paul says to the Christians in Galatia, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Then just in case you had some hypocrites in the church, we're ready to say, yes, he said, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone, here's a crucial point, does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Hello brethren. Even if you come to church on Christmas, even if you visit every Sabbath, even if you throw tithes and offering, if you are not filled with the spirit of Christ through absolute surrender to him, you are none of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Somebody say amen. Now watch me. Evil spirits, demons, devils, call them what you may, have a tendency to pin sicknesses, diseases, bad habits, and the like to those who facilitate them. They say if you never go on any tree, four rules follow the past by you. I if I sleep with dog, you catch the wake with what? Flee. Listen to what I said again. Evil spirits, pin sicknesses, diseases, bad habits and the like to those who facilitate them. But when Jamaican see certain demonstrations of sickness and disease and death, they have a way to say it. No, so, so, so. But what they are saying is that somebody said something upon them. No, something is set upon us from the sin of man came into the world. From the day that Adam and Eve fell, something was set upon us. The devil! But the devil has a way of hiding behind the scenes and act as if he's not the one involved in all the spiritism and the things we see about us. Hello, somebody? Know who your true enemy is. If you give the devil a sandwich, he'll take the whole kitchen. So that is why when you get the call to repent and to be baptized, young people watching tonight, do not take it slightly. Satan wants to kill you in your sin. Let me tell you something about the sickness bearing demons, Elder Lewitt. Mark 9, 17 to 29, call him a false spirit. Matthew 9, 32 to 33, calls him a mute spirit. So sometimes they'll come and they make you dumb. But Pastor Archer, we've made the spiritual warfare in this great controversy so scientific, we have pretty words for them. Special abilities, special needs. Hello, somebody? In the Bible times, they understood that all the things that we suffer from as a people is, are as a result of Satan's work. And the only way to destroy Satan's work in your life is to be filled with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Matthew 12, 22 and 23, Pastor Nevins, the Bible said that the man had a blind and a mute spirit. And as soon as the spirit was cast out, the man started chatting and say. Luke 8, 26 to 39 and Mark 5, 13 tells us that the man had a mad spirit. But we don't call it that. Schizophrenia. When Jesus, according to Mark 5, went to the tomb of the Gadarenes, he found a man there in the cemetery that was so fierce. Every time they chained him, he got loose. And people were afraid to go over there. 
But one day Jesus showed up on a boat. And when Jesus saw the man state, he went over. And the demons know Jesus. And because they know Jesus, ah, Pastor Bowers, when they see the maker, they say, we know who you are. Can you imagine that somebody, demons know Jesus and man no know Jesus. Hello somebody, Satan know Jesus and man no know Jesus. They say we know who you are. You are the son of God and hear the fierceness them. Have you come to destroy us before the time? What is that saying? As much as Satan is acting as if he's going to win the war, Satan knows that the battle done long time. Oh, somebody say amen. Look here. Even Satan's army knows that they are going to be destroyed one day. So they say, Jesus, have you come to destroy us before the time? Let me tell you something. When God is in your life, Satan is a loser. Mm. But here's the interesting part. He asked the demon, what is your name? The response my name is legion because we are what many hello somebody my name is what legion because we are many notice he never said our name you know he said my name is legion because we are what many in other words we are united to mash up in life now the question is what is a legion by definition a legion was anywhere between 3,000 and 6,000 soldiers in the Roman army. That was led by a commander. But I am going to make it modest. I will work with Brother Young, the 3,000. What's the point you're making, Pastor? For those who think that this is a play-play business. For those who think that this is a squab squab business. For those who think say, it's so so so. For those who are in sin and, and because they cannot see the spirits around them. The devil's fighting for them. And the angels of God trying to call them. Listen to this. If Satan can find 3,000 demons to put into one madman. That means the devil's enough. Hello somebody. If Satan can find 3,000 demons to put into one madman who is of no significance per se, it means that the world is not short of devils. Why do you think we see the murders that we see in Jamaica? Why do you think we see them killing the babies, burning down houses with people in them? chasing after young people and shooting them, raping our children? The devil is on the leash. He's on, the, he's on the run. Not on a leech. The devil is out there with the intention of destroying as many lives as he can. The Bible says that the enemy knows that he's, he has but a short time. So he's working what? Day and night trying to ensure that you don't get right. Even Satan knows that time is running out. But men outside of Jesus still believe they have time. Hello, somebody. Watch me. So if 3,000 demons could be committed to one man, man, it means that Satan has them in bundles. Because the Bible tells us that a third of the stars were cast to the earth with him according to Rome, uh, Revelation 12. And these stars represent the devils that fell. They represent angels, but in this case, they are what? Fallen angels. And therefore, sometimes you see your children behave in a certain way. Hello, somebody? It not so, so, so. Devil enough. And that is why you have to be careful, young people, what you plug your ears with. Ah, you know. That's why you have to be careful what you are watching on Netflix. Some years ago, Michael Teachers College and some other main uh, major schools had a big issue because they were playing some board games of evil and lying and it's pure demon possession took over the place. One of my colleagues in college from one of the small islands said that they saw a demon manifestation and when they were casting out the demon, he was inspired to ask the name like Jesus did and ask him how he got into the young lady and he said through the fire red hairstyle. You have to be careful what you eat. You've got to be careful with who you are sleeping. 
You've got to be careful where you go. You've got to be careful what you watch. You've got to be careful what you hear because your adversary, the devil, goes about seeking for whom he may devour. But I have good news for those who are now worrying that Lord of mercy, if Satan have 3,000 demons, me dead now. Pastor Archer, the demons wanted to go into a herd of pigs. And the Bible says, I think it was about 2,000. That's a whole lot of pig money. And guess what they had to do? Ask Jesus permission. And the Bible says that when Jesus gave them the permission, they went and possessed the animals. No wonder the dogs them attack Sister Balfour. You know somebody? You ever look upon them pit bulls? Devil. Even animals can be influenced by these spiritual forces. God used that donkey to talk to Balaam. The devil used a serpent to deceive Eve. And so, here's the good point. The, 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 the pigs ran violently into, on, down the steep into the sea and drowned. What's the point, pastor? If Satan has to ask permission to go in a hog, he means he can't come in your life without permission. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say glory. You're not getting it. I say if Satan has to ask permission to go in the Trenton, permission to go in the, the Arnold, permission to go in the swine, the pig, it means that Satan cannot come into your life unless you let him in. You are more valuable than bacon. You are more important than ham. You are more sweeter to Jesus than pepperoni. If Satan cannot just up and go into an animal, it means that only if you allow Satan to take set pain, you can come in your life. Not only that, I'm getting there, I'm, I'm wrapping up. Luke 13, verse 16. Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath who was bent over for 18 years. And when he healed her and she straightened up, they were cursing him. And Jesus said to them, If your donkey falls into a hole on a sabbath will you not take him out take it out and nobody answered and he said if you are willing to assist your donkey on a sabbath must not this daughter of abraham come to think of it whom satan by the way what modern condition do you call what the woman had tell me somebody scoliosis hello somebody but according to jesus he never saw so so. And he never set it by you. And a saint must then go put it by you. It's Satan. So the Bible said, Jesus healed the woman. What is the point? If Christ is not the center of your life, you are in a perfect position for Satan to take advantage of you. You hear me? No, look at it. Pastor Johnson, show me some Bible evidence. Matthew 16. After Jesus told Peter that he is blessed because flesh and blood never gave him the revelation that Jesus is the Christ. Peter got proud and felt as if his theology was so good. He must have thought, no wonder I must have gone to Northern Calvary University or Oakwood or Andrews. And Peter, when Jesus told him about his mission to die for the sins of man to give us the hope experience. Hear Peter to Jesus, far be it from you, Lord, it shall not happen to you. But he, verse 23 of Matthew 16, Jesus turned to Peter and said what? Get thee behind me, what? Satan. If you give Satan an opportunity, he will devour you. More evidence. In Acts 5, when Ananias and Sapphira tried to jinnal the apostle, Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the what? The Holy Spirit. So Satan took him over. You give the devil a sandwich and take the kitchen. John 8, you are of your father, the devil. Verse 44. So all those who are still living in sin and say, Jesus and me, daddy, yo, lie. Because if you are a child of God, you will obey the word of God. Luke 22, verse 3 and 4. When Judas left the last supper to go and sell out Jesus, the Bible says, then Satan entered Judas. Hello, somebody? You cannot have it both ways. Every time you resist Jesus, you accept the devil. 
Hello, somebody? You see, what the devil wants us to believe in the past and heavens is that there's a middle ground. You are not bad nor good. You are just trying to figure it out. If you resist the devil, you choose Jesus. If you resist Jesus, you choose the devil. Brother Brian in Stanton used to tell us when we were on the youth choir and not singing, open up your food mouth and sing. You can't sing cuckoo. I said, what is that, Brother Brian? He said, old people turn food when you're not sitting down nor standing up. You're just there with someone at the middle. So. You can't sing cuckoo. It's either you're in or you're out. Hello, somebody. Then Satan did what church? Entered Judas. So he entered Peter and Jesus had to rebuke him. He entered Ananias and Sapphira, then turned liars. He entered Judas in cell out Jesus. In Genesis 3, he entered the serpent and deceived Eve. Let me tell you something tonight. Continued unchristian habits are indicative of being led by an unclean spirit or devil. Continued. Some of the behaviors that they demonstrate in our lives, hatred, grudge, malice, gossip, lying, backstabbing, disobedience, hypocrisy, anger, contention, abuse, bitterness, unfaithfulness, jamming, genialship, sensitivity, complaining and murmuring, uncooperativeness, disregard for authority, low or no desire for prayer, Bible study, and matters of the mission. Hello, church people. Sinful lifestyle, backsliding, rebellion to God's will, hardness of your heart. Galatians 5 proves it. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's either you have an unclean spirit or you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And how do you know when you have him? The Bible says in John 16, he will lead you into what? All truths. And not only so, but the fruit of the spirit. Put it on the screen, Galatians 5.22. What is the fruit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness to God, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. When the spirit is in your life, you can't stop drinking rum. When the spirit of God is in your life, you can't stop smoking ganja and take cocaine and crack. You can stop murdering, fornicating, and committing adultery. You can stop sinning and have power through the spirit of God. My closing text is getting late. Matthew 12, 43 to 45. So when the unclean spirit goes out from the man, and comes back and finds him clean and swept. What it means? It means that the man's life is lacking the, the spiritual values that God inculcates in the believer's life. That means he has given up on his spiritual nurture. A life that is swept, clean and polished, garnished, indicates one void of Christian verities and spiritual growth. It is emptied of the attributes of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Friendliness with an unclean spirit causes it to take liberty in your life. Talk about he's going back to his house. Who is living in your heart tonight? It's not very hard to tell as my singing evangelist takes the time to come. So based on all the texts we've seen, Pastor Shakes, there is a hell of a warfare going on in our lives. But there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain that holds us captive. Somebody say amen. How do you overcome these, oh, these, these unclean spirits when a source us up? James 4 verse 7 says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. Put the link in the chat for somebody to choose God tonight. Uh, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw near to God. And he will do what? Draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. And your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. 
and he will lift you up. Pastor, tell if you come, you say, me no want nobody force me. And some of the others it is to say, me no want nobody pressure me. If you fail to accept Jesus and the pressure you're going to pressure, a rose you're going to rose. Satan has no power over you but that granted him, either by you or by God, like in Job's case and others. Thus, through deception or trickery, he bids you distrust God in order to fulfill his own agenda, like he did to Eve and Cain and Jacob and David and Judas, Ananias, Sapphira, and so many others. But 2 Corinthians 10 tells us that we walk Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal church of God, but mighty in God for the pulling down of what? Strongholds, the demons that come to pin some things and hold it into your life. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. No wonder Martin Luther says, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us, the prince of darkness dream. We tremble not for him, his rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure, one little word shall fail him. When you have God in your life, the demons on the loose cannot take advantage of you. Psalm 91 says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my what church, my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that walks in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand shall fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come close to you Christians do not fight to gain victory they fight to claim victory. <laughs> you never hear me somebody. I said Christians do not fight to gain victory, Sister Zena. They fight to claim victory. Because when Jesus is your master, when Jesus is your savior, no devil out of hell can tear you down. Colossians 2 verse 15 says when Jesus rose from the grave, having disarmed the principalities, you remember the top ranking demons, and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in the cross so finally Matthew 17 tells us that Jesus came and found a man complaining that his son is sick he's an epileptic and he brought him to the disciples to be healed and they couldn't heal him so when Jesus rebuked them and asked how long shall I be with you faithless generation the Bible says in verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the man. What did the Bible say first, Pastor Nevis, that the man said that his son had? Epilepsy. What Jamaicans call what? Fits. But how did Jesus heal the fits? He cast out a devil. Hello, somebody? So every sickness is a demonstration of Satan's plan. But sometimes God will heal you and, some, and at other times he will allow you to persevere through the sickness for his own glory. But what you want to know is that you are wrapped up in Jesus. Or no matter how you're sick, you're still going to lose your soul. And it came to pass when the disciples came to him, they were ashamed. And they said, Master, how come we could have cast him out? Because they cast out demons before Sister Zena. Jesus said, because of your unbelief. In other words, Pastor Nevins, it was not one of the regular dibi dibi spirits them. It was maybe one of the principalities. So it, it, was, um, it was more fierce and vicious. So when the disciples saw the display, they were afraid. And Jesus said, you should have stood your ground upon the authority of the word of God. But then he said to them, how be it? This type does not go out 
except through what? Prayer and fasting. One of the least support programs in the Adventist church is prayer and fasting. Hello, somebody? We are 22 people maximum today, I believe. Sometimes people are busy. Sometimes they are busy conveniently. When you call prayer and fasting church empty, you call big day in Zion church full. And that is why sometimes we have no victory in our personal lives. Because the only way you can get rid of some of the demons out of your life is what church? Prayer and fasting. Some demons say just pray while you go bedside prayer or walk and pray a prayer in your heart. I just say the blood of Jesus. But some of them trang. So Jesus said you must what? Overcome them by what church? Prayer and fasting. I don't know what the demons have been doing in your family tonight. I don't know what the devils have been doing in your life, in your health, in your wealth, in your mind. But Jesus Christ can give you victory over those demons. Yes, it not so, so, so. But my God has power over the principalities and the powers. Uh, John 8, 36, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Romans 6 says, anybody that you surrender to, that is the person who owns you. If you are still resisting salvation tonight, the devil is your master. The link is in the chat. If you want to sign up to become a part of Jesus' army and to come out of the ranks of sin, click on that decision card tonight and choose Jesus. Because Romans 8, 37 says, Yet in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him that loves us. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never failing. Oh, help he amidst the flood of what? Mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe still seek to work us oh, woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. But the Bible says, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear for God that willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. Somebody say one word tonight. I know it's a long sermon, but I'm almost done. I just have a short story and I'm done. A father sent his son outside. The sister Zena gets ready to sing and you fill in the decision card. And said, son, I want you to roll away this big stone to the back of the house. Look at the big stone. The boy was just nine years old. But because his father believed in him, he thought he could do it. But when he went outside to push, every time he pushed on the rock, it rolled right back into place. He couldn't manage. But his father stood in the doorway saying, Son, you can do it, but you must push with all of your might. So he kept on muscling up himself, locating all the vim, the vigor, and the vitality he had. But every time he pushed a little on the rock, it shook forward, then rolled right back into place. Then ultimately, he was so disappointed. He threw his arms into the air and said, Dad, it is impossible. I cannot do it. Yet you keep telling me to push with all of my might. The father then went out and said, Sonny boy, push with me. And seamlessly, easily, they rolled away the boulder to the back of the building. His father then sat him down and said, Son, when I gave you the task, I knew it was too difficult for you to do by yourself. But I wanted to teach you a lesson in life. That some things you don't need any help to deal with. You can do them all by yourself. But some things are so great, you need help. So I stood in the doorway so that from the first time you failed, you would recognize the strong father you had in your life. So that you could say, come over here, daddy, and let's do it together. But you thought that pushing with all your might means pushing alone. No, son. Pushing with all your might means that whenever you need assistance, call upon your father for help. Tonight you have been struggling with sin. You know you want to serve Jesus. But you are struggling. Push with all your might. Push with Jesus. The smoking is holding you back. Push with Jesus. The gambling is keeping you down. Push with Jesus. The devil is on your heels. Push with all your might. Push with Jesus. 
you can overcome the devil you can break the chains of captivity and get freedom tonight over the principalities and the powers and the devils in your life click on the card and sign up for your baptism jesus wants to save you sing that song sister zena play her track there is power in the name of jesus there is power, power in, the name of jesus. in the name of jesus there is power, power in, the name. in the name of jesus fill out the car tonight put it in the links to break every chain break every chain break every somebody chain. needs the victory tonight there's power to break every chain so break every chain. break every chain break every sing that song my chain. sister somebody's gonna walk free tonight there is power in the name of jesus in the name of jesus to overcome the principalities and powers in your life there is power in the name of jesus to tear down the strongholds there is power in the name of Jesus. To walk free from the devil and to embrace a to light break in Christ. Every chain, Loose. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's power to break your chains. To break every chain. Surrender to Jesus. Break every chain. Click on the link back Break every Click on the link, sinner. Come to Jesus. There's an army right the forces of those who are for you are more than they that are against you. There's an army rising. They that are for us are more than they that are against us. There's an army Allow God to fight your battles tonight. Break away from your sins. Break the chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every break chain, break Somebody every type, chain, break in the chat, break type, every break in the chat chain. and get your freedom tonight. Click on the link and There's fill it up. There's an army rising up. Rising if you want your freedom in Jesus, type break in the chat. Break There's from sickness, break from pain, break from suffering, break from disease, break from sin. There's freedom in Jesus. Army but you must allow Jesus to be your savior. There's an army. To break every, break every chain. Break every break chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. If you want to walk in your picture tonight, type break. To break every chain. Break, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. What do you do? To break every chain. Break every chain. Tear down the Tear down the principalities and powers, dear Jesus, and set somebody free tonight. Break every chain. Break every chain. What do you hear? I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. There's victory for the backslider tonight. I hear the chains falling. There's victory for the sinner man and the sinner woman tonight. There's victory for those yeah. who are filled with demons tonight. Uh, loose in the I name of the Jesus. If you want to be click on the link uh, and choose Jesus tonight. I hear the Break chains falling. Oh, sing that song. I hear the chains falling. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break your chains tonight in Jesus. Walk away from sin tonight in Jesus. Claim your victory tonight in Jesus. Acknowledge the power to give you purpose tonight in Jesus. What more can you hear to come to Jesus than what you've heard tonight? The devil and his army 
are trying to send you to hell. But what in hell do you want? There's a home in heaven for you. But you've got to claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Break your chains tonight, sinner man. Break your chains tonight, sinner woman. Break your chains tonight, young people. Be free in Jesus. For whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. I claim my freedom tonight. If you claim yours, just type in the chat, claim. Shout claim in the church. Pray with me. Everlasting Father, Lord God, we claim it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we realize that the warfare is bigger than what we can see with our eyes. If not so, 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 there's more to the story. But I'm so glad that regardless of what the enemy, of regardless of what the prince of darkness is doing, that there is power in the name of Jesus to walk free from sin. Power in the name of Jesus to receive healing from sickness. Power in the name of Jesus to overcome demon possessions, principalities, and powers. To overcome the darkness of this world. To overcome the pleasures of this world. And to take the helmet of salvation. Tonight I place into your hands that young man who is watching and listening now and struggling. Lose him for your glory. I place in your hands that young lady who believes that the answer is in another man. Lose her. Let her find the answer in Jesus. Tonight I pray for that elderly person who has been rejecting the gospel. Still thinking that he or she has time. Lose them in the name of Jesus. Tonight I pray for the Christian who is struggling with temptation. Lose them in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are backsliders. We pray for those who are on the verge of giving up. We pray for our young people who are covered with devils. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Satan, we, 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 we rebuke you tonight in the name of Jesus. We defy you tonight in the name of Jesus. And we decree and we declare victory in the name of Jesus. Victory over sin. Victory over death. Victory over the grave. Victory over the principalities and the powers. Victory over Satan and his demons. Victory in the name of Jesus. We name it. We claim it. And we proclaim it. Let the people of God say, Amen. Give God the highest praise. Shout some more to the Lord. Give him the highest praise.